In this video, I'm going to show you why remediation in Adobe Captivate is so cool. One of my clients reached out to me recently and they're doing some video training inside Adobe Captivate. And what they want to do is in the final quiz, they want to give learners the opportunity after making several attempts to jump back to the portion of the video where that information was taught and then return to the quiz, return exactly to where they left off and make another attempt at answering the question. The goal is we want to make our learners successful and that's what they're going for here. So I decided to make a little demo to show him how you can do this quite easily in Adobe Captivate. So I decided to use actually the video or the, the sample video that's included in the resources tab. So if you want to recreate this, uh, this interaction that I've built here, it's easily done by downloading and working with this file that you see here, but I've already got it already kind of set up. So I'm just going to open that up and we'll take a look here. So here we have the video that's the benefits of exercise. And you can see along the timeline here, uh, I've added some bookmarks. So the first bookmark is the exercise benefits. That's actually in the original file. I added my own options for exercise bookmarks. And uh, the final one, I renamed it outcomes of exercise here. And, and I got rid of the overlay slides that were built into that demo and added my own question slides. So you can see here, uh, first question here, what are the benefits of exercise mentioned in the video? What are some examples of exercise mentioned in the video? And what are some possible outcomes of not exercising? So very simple, straightforward. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my questions. And one of the great benefits of Adobe Captivate is that you can work on multiple questions at the same time. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and after selecting the first question, select the last question so that all of them are highlighted. We're going to go over to the properties inspector and specifically we're looking at the quiz tab here. So we can do a bunch of different things. We can shuffle the answers, uh, change the numbering and so forth here. I'm not too concerned about that stuff here. You can certainly customize it as you wish. What I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to change the on success action from continue to go to next slide. I'm going to increase the number of attempts. I'm going to give them two tries before we introduce remediation here. And we'll include a retry message. And my failure message is going to change because essentially instead of incorrect, press Y or click anywhere to continue, I'm actually going to change that message to uh, instead of continue to review. So we're just going to go and kind of blow this out here. Find the incorrect message here. Don't worry about kind of moving this all around. So uh, first we'll change the word continue to review. And I'll do the same thing for the other slides. And here's a little pro tip here. If you select all of your slides again and click on reset master slide, everything will go back to its original position there. So we've changed the message to review as opposed to continue. And like I said already, we set it up for two tries before that last attempt. Now the last attempt, we're going to change that from continue to our remediation action. And in this case here, we're going to jump to bookmark. So we're going to change that for all of them at the same time. And then one by one, you can click on each slide. And so for this and the possible outcomes will be outcomes of not exercising bookmark. For the uh, examples of exercise, we'll choose options for exercise. And the first one is already exercise benefits. And it will continue playing the project. So it will jump to that portion of the video 
and start playing at that portion. Now, the one thing we're missing, of course, is a way for the learner who's been forced to go back to this video to watch it to return to the quiz. So I'm going to place a uh, smart shape on the slide here. And we'll position it maybe down here at the bottom and make it roughly in the center there. I can use the alignment toolbar to actually center that. I'm going to press Control E on my keyboard to extend the appearance of this button for the rest of the slide. And I'm just going to type in return to quiz. We're going to select use as a button and the action for this will be uh, we'll, we'll change that to return to quiz. That is an actual action that's available to you there. We'll also turn on the hand cursor, disable the click sound. And I'm going to do um, one thing as well. I don't want to see this button the first time we watch the video. So I'm going to give it a proper name. I'm going to call it uh, return to quiz button. And I'm going to make it not visible in output. So I'm going to click on this icon here. Now how we're going to make it appear is on our first question slide. So once we've watched the video, moved on to the quiz, we're going to create a little tiny advanced action that's going to run when we arrive on this slide here. So I'm going to go into the project drop down menu, select advanced actions, and this will be called uh, RTQ, nice simple name there, and um, we will show our button that we just created there, our return to quiz button. So I'm going to save that as an action, click OK and close, and we can run that when we arrive on the first question of our quiz here. So we're going to execute advanced actions and we'll select RTQ, return to quiz. So everything's set up. Let's test this out. And I will fast forward through the watching of the video for the sake of my video. But uh, suffice it to say, you'll be able to see how this works. So you should notice that uh, during the video, there was no return to quiz button. It was hidden from view. So now is our chance to, uh, you know, get this correct and see if we can do this well. So uh, what are the benefits of exercise here? So we can select any of the correct answers. In this example, I think what I'll do is I'll get this one correct first. I'll get the first one correct and show you what happens here. So these two are not correct answers. The first three are correct answers. I'm going to go ahead and submit, correct, click anywhere, press Y to continue. And it goes to our second question. Now, here, let's get this wrong. Let's choose the wrong answers for this and hit submit. Get a try again, right? Because this is, um, you know, two tries. I'll put um, just one other answer in, but still incorrect. We'll hit submit. Incorrect. Click anywhere or press Y to review. So if I click anywhere, It takes me back to the video, to the portion of the video where it talks about different ideas on how you can exercise. And now I have this return to quiz. Now, some people might think that this will take you back to the first question. The cool part about remediation in Adobe Captivate, it takes me back to the question I was working on before that I wasn't able to be successful with. So now that I've rewatched that portion of the video, I can select the correct answers and, of course, move forward here. So we'll get another one wrong just to see here. It's incomplete, not wrong, but submit, try again, depression, submit. Okay, let's review it again. Again, takes me back to the video where, you know, I can learn the specifics of what that question is asking about. 
And if I return to quiz, again, it returns me to the question that I've been struggling with here. So I can choose now the correct answer, um, you know, and, and make sure that uh, I've chosen the right answers. And the benefit of this, of course, our goal is not to fail or pass people. Our goal is, of course, to make people successful uh, with whatever we're teaching them, whether it's knowledge or skills. So giving them an opportunity to improve their learning if they were unsuccessful the first time is really, you know, a benefit that we can include in our e-learning.